We are continuing to follow the officer-involved shooting at Austin East High School. We have been on your side with complete coverage since we first brought you this story as breaking news yesterday afternoon. A student who was armed is dead and a KPD officer is injured after a shootout in a school bathroom. The student who died yesterday was the fifth Austin East student to die in a shooting since the beginning of the year. And with a string of heartbreaking and traumatic losses for this community, we had questions about how parents can help their kids process their feelings and protect their mental health. Lindsay Stone from the, McNab from the McNabb Center has some guidance. I think it's a common question right now uh, with a lot of parents because um, it's a question that's uh, unfortunately come up repeatedly as they've had um, multiple incidents where um, they've had to deal with these questions from adolescents. So there's probably even um, layers of questions coming up now. You know, I think um, what we usually tell parents is to be proactive um, with your children. Um, don't expect them always to just come to you with their questions, but to be proactive to go to them and say, hey, we've talked about what happened today. What questions do you have? How are you feeling? How are you thinking? But also don't expect them to have all the thoughts and the feelings in that moment. Kids react really differently. Also understanding the age of your child and what's appropriate for them so that when they do bring up questions, you know, what, what you tell them and what you feed back to them may be different based on your elementary child that has questions just because they heard about it or an adolescent who was in the school um, and that may have really more specific questions about their safety and their community. So being proactive, um, one of the main things after any traumatic event um, is reestablishing safety and security. So keeping that at the forefront of how you talk to, so whatever their questions are, whatever their feelings and their thoughts are, making sure that you're wrapping all of that up with establishing that everybody around them is attempting to keep them safe and secure. Some common things that obviously that you would see, and it depends on how we handle that in the short term too. So some common things that you might see are an increase in anxiety, um, an increase in feelings of being confused or worried about, especially an environment that they go to every day. They're used to their school environment, they're used to coming home, and that may feel confusing and different to them um, after a traumatic event, especially after repeated traumatic events, um, whether they were connected to that person or just connected to the community they can respond the same. So um, that can be a little bit different. Um, it's also important to remember that there are some common responses to trauma, but that can be different. Some people may do more avoidance and they don't wanna be in the same environment that the event happened in. They may avoid things that used to give them pleasure. They may avoid talking about the event. Others may be numb and say they have no feelings towards the event or feelings towards what happened. Um, they may not just be ready to talk about that or they may be confused about their own feelings. They may have those um, increase in anxiety feelings. And then others might relive the event a little bit more than others, either through um, sometimes thoughts, um, flashbacks of the event, um, wanting to talk about it more. If it's a child that typically is more of a verbal processor, they might wanna repeatedly talk about it. Um, um, and understanding that we can just go back to those same things of reassuring um, their feelings are normal and that they are safe and secure.